Hey, it's Uncle Chubbs, and we're going to continue the part two for the Sound Sage and Time Sage era. Um, pretty much, I actually rewrote the whole page, so we even got all the sages within this one, and we can go over it later. Um, but right here, and this is within the actual order they are. So we're at the Sage of Guile, Noburu. He pretty much attained his power through uh, a demonic trade, which allowed him to be what he's pretty much capable of. He, his name represents exactly what he is. Um, but they pretty much used him to get stuff done. Um, but next, we got the Sage of Life, Kulam. He was actually born with this power. And he's a very important person because then he creates the Sage of Death, which is Renion, which he's technically also born slash created. Now the thing with the Sage of Death is he actually isn't a human. It's actually a demon brought back to life as a human or a living thing. So it's technically like an undemon, not, not human nor demon. But he has to be constantly revitalized and worked on just to stay alive and more or less uh, at a constant life source. Otherwise, he will revert back. Then we got the chemical sage, Ragish. He attained his powers through experiments and other means to get it on accident. Pretty much out of all these people... He's the only one to not necessarily intend to obtain his skill. Well, I'm not saying the Water Sage intended or even the Lightning Sage, but he was just doing his own thing and then he accomplished something and attained a skill for it. And then we got the Sage of Mutations, Putora. He also got his power through experiments, but unlike all the other sages, he doesn't work with all any of them. It's actually very unstable, and he ends up dying very slowly after. His research is what lives on, and that's why he's still considered a sage. No one with his powers are actually technically a descendant of his. And that's why he's separated. And pretty much, this right here, from Putora all the way up to Bara, are all the type of sages within this era. And here's the cool thing that I forgot to include last time. Back with the elemental sages, these five, that's about 26,000 years ago. While this is only about 13,000 to 8,000 years ago, the time to see. Now the thing with some of these sages, depending on how they got their powers, what their powers are, they can start living longer and more efficiently. Or they just start becoming technically a demon to where they're technically dead already but still functioning alive. And these sages are very important to the world history <coughs> later on, which we'll discuss that later. We still have some more sages to cover, which we'll cover them in this video as well since there's only five left. So for that we got the Sage of Puppets, Kaku, he did his stuff through training and knowledge. He pretty much took previous sages' powers and knowledge and repurposed it to control other things from afar. Not like earth power or anything like that, but like people or creatures or inanimate objects. We also have the illusionist sage, Suki. That is, uh, my bad. He pretty much got his power through demonic trade, and it pretty much allowed a large branching out of powers from then on. We also have the Sage of Light, uh, Moradora, and they got their power through knowledge and practice, just for, through research from previous sages above. Pretty much knowing the Sage of Shadows powers and all that it can do and other people, it allowed the birth of light and the control of it. Then we got the Sage of Souls, Argemeyer, or the first professor, wizard, whatever, he has many titles. 
Um, but he is the founder of the Soul Society. He also pretty much attained his powers through knowledge and practice through the pe previous people above. And then finally, we have the Sage of Explosions. And his name's Tozga. And he also got his powers through knowledge and practice from the previous above. Now, the only reason he's considered a sage is because he created a whole new class of abilities, pretty much using explosions as all you can do. It is pretty much a really interesting way to go about things. Very dangerous, and so his descendants are actually very small and not many are known. They're actually, most of them are criminals are in hiding, but he also was technically a sage with that power first. So he is considered that within history. And that right there is taking place around 8,000 to 500 years ago from current date within the story, which the story, the universe, the world all takes place within current time. So as this progress, this will progress as well. I mean, this is estimated, so it's not accurate. But within 100 years from now, this would say 600 years ago, 8,100 and such, and stuff like that. And these are all the sages considered within the history of Demai. We can go into more detail about them later, but for now, we'll go into more other things. Well, thank you for watching. I'll be posting more soon.